Hello there, fellow humans. Today I want to talk about the equipment and consumable changes in World of Tanks Blitz. Now, after the terrible new matchmaker and the awful changes to collectors, this change will surely be received better, right? Uh oh. Well, Wargaming truly is hitting banger after banger after banger after certified banger. I don't miss. Here are all the changes for the new season, coming to consumables, coming to vehicles, and also coming to equipment. And only the equipment one is very unpopular, but so we'll get to that last. Let me start off with consumables. I'll get into that later, why I don't think any of this is a good idea, but let's first have a look at it. Now, the reload time of the repair kit decreasing and the first aid kit being free, that's a great thing. And the automatic fire extinguisher. Well, the first aid kit and the fire extinguisher being free doesn't really matter because using them is a pretty bad idea you're just kind of wasting a slot in that case because the multi-purpose pack and the repair kit is most of the time everything you need unless you have a vehicle that really loves getting set on fire and then most of the time the multi-purpose pack is already enough then there is a free engine boost that is free for all vehicles 10 percent increase for 10 seconds which could help with some vehicles and a nice addition there's now three levels of engine boost which is We'll get to that. The duration of the regular engine boost will decrease by 3 seconds and the reload time will decrease by 10. That goes through with the others as well. Adrenaline, regular calibration, tungsten, shell reload boost and reactive armor will all decrease in time. They will be effective, but the reactive armor, for example, will have more effectiveness. The time they are effective is less, the time they reload is also less. So that's the big changes here. But the new thing is that there is a new free engine boost. And the engine power boost, the regular one, it's still there. And then we have the improved engine power boost. Wargaming is never going to miss an opportunity to screw with the FA-215B. And this time they're removing some of the consumables on the vehicle together with the rest of the line and the Chieftain, the Chimera, and also the Annihilator. So British light tanks, Japanese and French tank destroyers, and French heavy tanks will gain additional consumables. The AMX-50B for some reason gets uh, armor. Why? And there's going to be slight upgrades to the T-44, IS-3, T-32, and the STA-1, which is nice because the STA and the T-44 especially kind of need them. And here is the unpopular part, the equipment change. The gunner armor will become 2% less effective. The calibrated shells will have be 8, 5, 13, and 8. Instead of the previous 5 it was for AP and the 10 it was for heat, APCR gets uh, screwed quite massively in this regard. So having APCR as a premium ammo now makes even less sense to use that. And then the ventilation will give 3% more to crew mastery, so that should go up to 8, which makes it now somewhat a viable choice because previously on any autoloader, just use the calibrated shells because proof ventilation are terrible. But now they might be a more useful use thing right there. Now, the improved modules will not only increase the durability of fuel tanks, once again screwing over the FE-215B, un probably unintentionally here, but the FE-215B has the fuel tank right in the front of the vehicle, which is a downside. And it also doesn't have durability to ammo rack as well, which is kind of sad and pointless. And uh, yeah, the defense system now makes more sense because it actually improves the chance of you not exploding. So kind of no point in the improved modules anymore. 20% track durability, 40% the reduction of ramming damage. The E50M or the MX50B makes sense for this, but all the others are just like, get the defense system. Then the optics will go from 10 on mediums and lights to 11 on lights and 8 on mediums. From 7 on heavies to 6 on heavies and from 5 on tank destroyers to 4. Then camouflage net. Yeah, again, we have very big different differences here in how uh, it applies. And the improved vertical stabilizer for some tanks. Vertical aim will improve by one degrees. Vertical up aiming. Y yes, we do. Yes. I mean, this makes sense for the, something like an oscillating turret, like an AMX-13. But outside of that, this is useless. And the improved suspension will sort of make sense now for some tanks. Again, l making the game more complex ha definitely helps the players learn the game. The enhanced gun laying drive and the supercharger are going to improve. Enhanced armor is going to get less bonus. And the improved assembly bonus is going to be reduced by 2%. So these two are just going to get worse entirely, which is sad. The improved control was never good anyway. So you should have never used it in the first place. The engine accelerator... Is that your right accelerator? <laughs> Final bonus of the engine will be 4% and 5% for every tank. So again, more complexion because we need that. But yeah, the improved control was always useless. So there's that. Refined gun, plus 5%. This is a great news for derp guns. Uh, but then... Uh, 
vertex stabilizer getting reduced not great for mostly medium tanks that use it and the enhanced tracks will make the description clearer it is still useless but unfortunately the toolbox becomes less useful sad so there's a lot of modules that get less useful and a lot of modules that get more complicated truly a amazing change like yes and high-end consumables bonus will be increased by three percent and a consumable will be decreased by three so uh I mean, th these two, if, if you want to save credits, just save on these two, pretty much. But, uh, ouch. Well, let's now get to the rant portion. So, by the reaction of the equipment change, I don't think I have to add anything to the um, equipment changes, really. Wargaming truly is hitting home run after home run right at the moment. They're, they're doing really great at pleasing the community. I, I appreciate that quite a lot. Um, but, well, at least there is a free mutant for some of you, so... There's that, I, I suppose. There's a, there was a mutant giveaway. A mediocre vehicle that nobody really wants. But hey, it's 2,500 gold free. That's not too bad. So, here's the thing. Complexion makes something, the more complicated. And if we have special consumables, special provisions, and special equipment within each type of tank or with different tanks, or having one equipment applied different to different levels of tanks, you just make the game more complicated and even harder to learn for new players. I mean, update 5.5 already reduced the amount of time that players take to go from tier one up to tier 10. So the learning time is a lot reduced, but now you have to learn even more things because a long time ago, when you had a 105 millimeter gun, that meant that you are most likely going to have 350 alpha damage. Very easy to learn, very easy to understand, simple formula to follow. Now, that's not the case anymore. And the same goes for equipment, consumables, and provisions. And obviously, while certain consumables and uh, provisions can give you an advantage in terms of if you use them or not, they also just add needless complexion. You have to now not only remember the tank statistics, but you also have to remember what random gimmick consumables they have. And in the case of, let's say, a VK-72 or a Type 71, you also have to remember what special equipment they can use because that tank can have 6 degrees of gun depression. It can have 9 degrees of gun depression. You'll never know because it doesn't even show you because there is only one gun depression model, so it always looks the same anyway. But... Yeah, that, that just adds needless extra complexity. I mean, I wouldn't have a problem with, like, having one specialized slot for each vehicle. Like, let's say, uh, like the uh, autoloaders have with their vents, and the, for example. So, you could just add one specialized slot for each vehicle type, for example. But things like the optics having different percentages of, or the camouflages having different percentages of application. Those just needlessly complicate the game to a degree that is absolutely not necessary at all and the gunner ever being nerfed is very sad also for medium tanks because they kind of rely on dpm a lot more than heavies do not cool but all the special consumables all the special provisions they're not good for the game in long run in my opinion because if you needlessly complicate all of these things, it makes it a lot harder to enter for new players. And we know where that ends up because it ends up like World of Tanks PC, where the game becomes so player unfriendly that it isn't even worth playing anymore. And I do hope that the World of Tanks Blitz team is doing better in that regard than the World of Tanks PC team at retaining playability of the game. But with the recent couple of changes, I don't know, I don't know about that because they've been very unpopular. So let's see that uh, it gets better in the future. And obviously the easiest way to do the equipment changes is to not do the equipment changes at all. Just leave it as it is. Get rid of that last slot, that consumable delivery system slot or whatever. Just get rid of that and get rid of all the random gimmick consumables. And then combine those random gimmick consumables just into that one equipment slot. You have one thing that's different. And then that's a lot easier to remember than this tank has shell reload boost this one has enhanced aiming this one has the super speed boost this one only has the regular speed boost this one has gunpowder as a possible provision this thing can have six degrees or nine degrees of gun depression so you're just making the game needlessly complicated at that point to the benefit of essentially nobody because that just, just doesn't help anybody i mean you could argue that oh good players are gonna be even better because they're going to be able to use those things uh, to perfection and to a degree, yes, but having only good players dictate the flow of the battle is what kills the game. That's what essentially made PUBG die. So that is a very terrible thing. So all the consumable changes 
in my opinion, not a good thing, right? The more consumables, the more variables there are in the game. The game's already incredibly complicated with over 500 tanks in the game. We don't need all those consumables at all. They're pointless. But that's not going to change. So what am I going to say? Nothing. I'm going to say thank you for watching. See you on the next one. Goodbye.